Hey, a friend, Chris Vandeviver here from WhyLogicProRules.com, the website that helps you get the most you can out of Apple's Logic Pro. Well, today is an awesome day, and that is because Logic Pro 10.7, the next major update in this amazing application, has just been released. And what it brings with it is, well, the next frontier in audio production. Spatial mixing with Dolby Atmos is now fully integrated and native to Logic Pro, which means that you don't need a separate application to begin mixing and releasing immersive 3D versions of your music. All you need is Logic Pro and a pair of headphones, and from there, you can mix and master your music with Dolby Atmos and export the necessary master files for distribution to Apple Music. So in part one of this 10.7 walkthrough here on Why Logic Pro Rules, we're gonna go in depth into spatial mixing. We have a lot to cover, but before we do, I just have two things for you here. Number one, as with every major Logic Pro update, your Mac will have to be able to update to one of the two most recent operating systems, meaning that your Mac has to be able to update at a minimum to macOS Big Sur or to that of the brand new macOS Monterey. Number two, please, please, please back up your version of Logic Pro before you update. It's so easy. It takes two seconds. Just open the application folder in the finder on your Mac system, create a new folder and give it the most appropriate name to you, and then hold option, click and drag Logic Pro to that brand new folder. Your Mac will go ahead and make a copy of your current version of Logic Pro. And now you have a safety net just in case if you update and 10.7 doesn't seem to agree with your Mac and setup, you have a way to backtrack. Okay, let's dig in. So first, what is spatial mixing with Dolby Atmos? Basically, it's a three-dimensional immersive form of experiencing and mixing music where you're able to place sounds around yourself or the listener and the sounds will actually sound like and feel like they're coming from in front of you, behind you, to the left, to the right, even above you and anywhere in between. And you can do this with pinpointed accuracy thanks to 3D object tracks. And the Dolby Atmos Renderer plugin, which is built into Logic now, is the tool that makes this all happen. So how do you get started mixing with Dolby Atmos? Well, just a couple of steps. First, we're gonna go to Logic Pro, Preferences, Audio, and you wanna make sure your IO buffer size is set to 512 samples. This is very important. Dolby Atmos sessions require this buffer size which means if you're not done recording quite yet in your project, don't convert your project to Dolby Atmos quite yet. Because of this buffer size, it will pretty much be impossible to record any new tracks without massive latency. And after that, you can just go to File, go up to Project Settings, and Audio, or you can go to the Mix menu down to Dolby Atmos. And right within the Audio Project Settings, we have a new field for Spatial Audio. But before we do that, let's open the mixer because a lot of things are about to take place. Once we select Dolby Atmos, Logic Pro is gonna let us know that this project needs to be converted from stereo to a surround format. This brings to mind that you probably wanna create a new project alternative of your project before you convert the session by going to File, Project Alternatives, New Alternative. And this way you can save two versions of your project, one that's a stereo version and one that's a Dolby Atmos version. And they'll both be saved in the same project file. Let's now select Dolby Atmos and click OK. All right, a lot of stuff has happened. The stereo output has been converted to a master output. The Dolby Atmos renderer plugin has been placed on the master output automatically. The output and panners for each of our channel strips have been converted to surround as well. Now there's one other detail that's kind of cutting ahead here, but when you export your Dolby Atmos sessions, the sample rate needs to be at 48K for those files. But as you can see here, our project is hanging around at 44.1. And the great news is if you typically work at a sample rate of 44.1, there's nothing for you to do. Logic will automatically upsample those final exported files to the correct 48K sample rate with a high quality upsampler. Okay, let's dig into the Dolby Atmos Renderer plugin because this is an important piece of mixing in Dolby Atmos. First, we have the monitoring format options. And... This is where you choose basically what kind of speaker setup you're working with. If you've invested in a surround system specifically for mixing with Dolby Atmos, then you would choose 7.1.4 and the renderer will play back the session for your speaker setup. But for many of us who probably have not invested in surround speakers, you're going to want to plug in your headphones 
and choose the binaural option. Now the renderer will play back your session and you'll get that full immersive sense of your project with height and depth, all just using a pair of headphones. Next, we have the surround bed, which is basically just all the different speakers that would be involved in a 7.1.2 setup. Below that, we have the 3D object list. And in fact, let's just kind of cut ahead here. I'm gonna solo the drums. And if we right click on the surround panner here, or hold control and click, we now have a new panning option for 3D object panner. And now the drums or the beats are listed in the 3D object list. And if we play the drums, and do keep in mind that the binaural rendering will sound slightly different here in this video than if you were listening in Logic itself, but just take a look at this 3D visual as we listen back to the drums. As you can see, there are two blue emitters that represent the left and right channels of the drums. And as we pan the drums around the space, we visually see the emitters move around the space. And only the 3D objects that are playing at that moment will be present in this visualization. So you won't have 118 different emitters floating around unless of course all 118 objects are playing back at the same exact time. And you can change the angle of the 3D visual by clicking on the tabs or just clicking, holding, and dragging with your mouse or trackpad. Okay, let's now dig into a different version of this project so we can start to get a sense of what this all sounds like in headphones. All right, we're in a new project alternative and we have two different types of tracks that we're working with. We can tell by the panners on the channel strips themselves that we have surround panners, which count for the audio bed tracks and these 3D object panners for the 3D object tracks. First, let's get a sense of playback with these different track types. To begin with, I have drums, bass, and chords that are all using the surround panner. And let's just take a quick listen to how it feels listening back to this with headphones. Here we go. Whereas we have 3D object tracks over here, and let's take a listen to these. Now I've gone ahead and created some automation for them so they will move around the space. Take a listen. Okay. So what are these track types? What do they mean to us? Audio bed tracks are the surround panner tracks here. And they're basically anything that you haven't decided to convert to a 3D object by right clicking or control clicking. Audio bed tracks are tied to specific speakers in a surround format. So the left speaker or the right speaker or the rear left or rear right. And if you imagine a classic stereo project where you have 50, 100 tracks and when you bounce that project out of logic, the resulting file is just a stereo file. All of the tracks are combined to a single file. Same would go with a surround mix as well when you export or bounce the entire project, meaning all of the audio bed tracks are combined into a single surround file. 3D objects, however, are not tied to specific speakers, which is why you're able to place a sound above your head and it will sound like it's above your head. They're also exported to their own audio files separate from the audio bed. And any panning that you've created for your 3D objects will be included in their files which is how Apple Music or any other streaming service will be able to recreate your Dolby Atmos mixes. Basically, if you want precise control of placement and motion of individual sounds, you should consider using the 3D object tracks in place of the audio bed or surround tracks. But if we double click on the different panner types, we get a panner plugin for each of the surround format and 3D object format, which provides us finer control for placement and height of our tracks. The surround panner has two different views, that of planar, which allows you to adjust the placement of the track and its relationship to the different speakers in the surround format and how much space they occupy across the different speakers. And the spherical view, which allows you to adjust the sense of height of your tracks as you move it closer to the center of the sphere. But you can adjust the elevation even in planar mode if you don't want to adjust the placement of your tracks just by using the elevation control in the top right hand corner. And the 3D object panner allows you to adjust your tracks from front to back, left to right and even above. 
So let's now get a sense of how all of this stuff moves around the space while you're listening with headphones. We're gonna take a listen right here to the beats, the bass, and the chords. And we're gonna pop open some of these surround panners so we can get a sense of how this all works and looks. First, let's take a listen to the surround tracks as they move around the different speakers. Here we go. So here the drums and the chords are opposite of one another and they're traveling around the space to the different speaker outputs. Next, we're gonna take a look at the spherical view and we're gonna take a listen to these tracks as they move around the different speakers and also how we get a sense of height from surround tracks. Awesome. Next up, we're gonna take a listen to these surround tracks and as they move around the space, they're gonna get closer and further away from us. They're gonna occupy more of the speakers in the surround format and less. Take a listen. Perfect. And now let's take a look at the 3D object panners as we listen back. So let's take a look at some of the automation that I've set for these. And you can see here that you can just write movements with the 3D panner as automation. And this will be transferred to their discrete files when you export your Dolby Atmos session. So let's take a look and a listen here. Of course, because we're working with expanded surround setup, we need plugins that support those extra speakers. And that's why many of the Logic plugins now support true 7.1.2 and 7.1.4 formats. All you have to do is go to the plugin field on an audio bed or surround track. And then if you take a look, let's go down to Space Designer and under Reverb here, Space Designer, we now have the option to convert from mono or stereo to 7.1.2. And what's great about Space Designer is that it has a whole slew of B format surround reverbs that are more immersive and provide that sense of elevation. If you go into the plugin menu into the surround spaces, you can now see Omni B format. And these are the convolution reverbs that you'll want to use for your Dolby Atmos mixes. There are also several Logic plugins that support 7.1.4. Also, you might find that you may need to process the individual channels of your surround tracks which is why Logic provides a multi-mono format for both Logic plugins and third-party plugins. You can open a multi-mono plugin on any channel strip that has been converted to 7.1.2 or above, or change the input from that of mono or stereo to surround. And then in the dropdown, let's take a look at something like Chromaverb, and we can open it as a multi-mono instance. And just like with dual mono plugins in Logic Pro, where you're able to use a plugin and process the left channel or right channel independently or the mid and the side independently. If we select this menu in the plugin, we now have the option to set each speaker to its own group. So we can set the left side all to one group and the right side all to one group or don't assign a group at all as we did with the low effects channel here. And now we have three different groups for each set of speakers and even the low effects channel that we can process independently from one another. And once you're done mixing your Dolby Atmos session, you then go to File, go down to Export, and you're going to export the project as an ADM BWF file. And once you click Save, Logic Pro will export your Dolby Atmos session at the correct format and sample rate. And you can even create a Logic project from an ADM BWF file by going to File, Import, Create Project from ADM BWF, and Logic will create a new project with the audio bed track and all 3D object tracks with their panning metadata included. Okay, the only other things that you need to know when it comes to mixing with Dolby Atmos in Logic Pro, number one, the integrated loudness of your project should be no louder at any moment throughout the song or project than negative 18 LUFS. 
Otherwise, your mix will clip when played back. So you would place the loudness meter after the Dolby Atmos plugin on the master output, click start in the plugin, and then play your project from beginning to end and make sure that it doesn't ever get louder than negative 18 LUFS. Number two, any plugins placed after the Dolby Atmos plugin will have no effect on the exported master files. If you place a channel EQ after the Dolby Atmos plugin, you will hear an effect if you adjust the EQ, but the EQ will not be included when you export the master ADM BWF files. Any processing that you want to apply to the entire audio bed has to be before the Dolby Atmos plugin on the master output channel strip. And number three, 3D object tracks go straight to the Dolby Atmos plugin, which means even if you place plugins before the Dolby Atmos plugin to EQ or compress your entire mix as one, the 3D object tracks will skip over any of those plugins. This means that you'll have to apply any processing directly to your 3D object tracks. Okay, that was a ton of information. In part two of this 10.7 walkthrough, we're gonna talk about all the other updates to Logic Pro, which includes the new producer packs, updates to the step sequencer, and many other workflow enhancements. Thanks so much, and I'll see you for more in the next video.